the presentation is about a championship weekend regatta, how we approach the weekend major regatta. So we are going to start with uh, preparing for the regatta, and the first person to pre present will be Greg and how he prepares on the big boat. You need the practice. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of us don't get a lot of time in the boat, but if you can get to a regatta early, there's great gains to be made that will help you prepare yourself for the regatta. I want to get the crew ready, so I want to do a bunch of maneuvers. I want to be sailing upwind, checking out the sails. I want to do a bunch of tacks, make sure everybody's tacking the boat correctly, making sure there's good communication on the boat right from the get-go. Sailing is the one of the few sports where people that race don't practice. We show up to the regattas, rarely do we sail the day before, never do we sail two or three days before the regatta, and we show up and go sailing, and generally about the second or third day of the regatta we go, oh now we're ready to go racing, oh our results Sunday were so much better than Saturday. It's important to remember on our smaller boats, we have crews two, three, four, and five, that there is still a lot to do, and we have less crew to do it have a good, clear picture of who's doing what and when. Special attention to the penalties. Like if it's a penalty, if you, if you foul someone, is it a percentage penalty or is it a 720 or a 360 or is it a 360 in the middle of the course and it's 720 within the three boat lengths of the mark? Because you don't want to spin a 720 if it was a percentage penalty because all you did is sail yourself to the back and now that penalty is even more painful. The people that don't get a chance to come out early might not see a 20, 30, 40 degree wind shift. They might not see the wind just totally shut off and reset itself. We're on the start line area, an hour before the start, and we can sail all the way up into our weather mark or close to it, backing and recording our wind data the whole way. We're going to have a good 15 minutes, half hour segment of really understanding what the wind is doing. With your tuning partner, you can define what these three modes are. Everybody knows where their position is in it and what the sail trim needs to be in. I want to see if there's a current issue playing that boats are getting set one way or another. At the same time, know who is on the other boats. So now, no matter what happens, you can be off the line by 100 yards and do a wind shot, you know which end of the line is going to be favored. Well, this is a huge benefit. It's basically having your own weather boat out there telling you what's going to happen halfway up the weather lane. I just want to be kind of in the favored area so I can get a good, clean start. Because like I said, we can't stop and start this boat. We've got to keep going to do just lose boat lanes if we uh, shut a big boat down too quick. Regatta's made up of multiple races. Let's say you get one good and one bad, so the average isn't good. If the tactician says, you know what, we're going to need to live in this lane for three, four minutes, it's going to take a while for these 30, 40 boats to clear out and give us some options. Because he wants you to mess with the guy above him, or he doesn't want you to leave him and cause him to get roared. I want communication with just the driver and the tactician at this point. The trimmers need to already know what's going on. That sets the precedence for when you hit the three boat length circle. Because if there was any doubt that that overlap was broken, there was a precedent set ahead of time and it goes, goes in your favor. But if you're fifth or sixth, there's going to be four or five boats ahead of you and you're going to be in bad air. So the key to that one is round the right gate, the opposite gate, and tack immediately. 